live in a pharmacological wonderland. Got a sore back? Pop some anti-inflammatories. Can't shake the blues? Try antidepressants. Care to avoid pregnancy? Just take the pill. Today we've got access to all manner of pills, many of which come with their own colorful side effects, but you probably don't think much about the side effects outside your own body. By which I mean you're probably not considering the homicidal fish or hermaphroditic frogs. But maybe it's time you did. <laughs> You've heard all about the host of dangerous chemicals found in pesticides and herbicides, heavy metals and industrial wastes run off the land into the Earth's water systems. That kind of contamination creates major ripples throughout ecosystems, and unfortunately, there are some newcomers to the list pharmaceutical drugs. Yes, with all those pills, trace amounts of drugs get peed out every day, and scientists are seeing a rise in concentrations of those drugs in our water. And these chemicals, particularly estrogen hormones and antidepressants, can seriously affect aquatic animals. Antidepressants are the most commonly prescribed medication in the United States, also the most documented pharmaceutical contaminants in our waterways. A new study shows that when male fathead minnows were exposed to levels of Prozac found in some wastewater, they became aggressive, even killing females in some cases. The researchers said the drug seemed seems to scramble the brains of the developing fish, disrupting how their brain genes are expressed and noticeably changing their behavior. Another study exposed perch to a common anxiety medication and watched timid fish grow bold, reckless, antisocial, and ravenous. And yet another study exposed zebrafish to levels of ibuprofen similar to what's found in some municipal wastewater and found that males significantly lost interest in courtship behaviors. It seems in humans the drug inhibits the production of prostate prostaglandins, which play a role in inflammation. But in these fish, prostaglandins also work as pheromones, so the fish weren't in the mood for love. Now these are lab studies, and we're not sure how they're going to translate to wild populations, but even low levels of pharmaceuticals may have big repercussions. There's a high likelihood that some of these drugs, antidepressants especially, bioaccumulate in fish or build up in their tissues, just as they do in humans. And any drug that affects animals eating prey avoidance aggression and reproductive behavior may end up up seriously impacting fish populations. And we already know that something else in our pee is messing with aquatic animals. Excess estrogen being eliminated by women taking birth control or hormone therapy drugs can contribute to reproductive messes including the so-called feminization of fish and frogs. Intersex fish, like males with eggs in their testes, have been found in many urban and suburban waterways, like the Potomac River. But humans aren't the only ones eliminating extra estrogen. Bodies of water near large industrial livestock farms contain unusually high high levels of the hormone, in some cases a thousand times higher than found in human sewage plants due to both natural and synthetic hormones flushed in cow waste. Some of these hormones leach into soil and groundwater and could contaminate drinking water for humans. Exposure to excess estrogen increases women's risk of breast and ovarian cancer and can lead to smaller genitals and lower sperm count in males. So that should be enough to worry you no matter what your gender. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency labels pharmaceutical contamination as an emerging concern and believes some drug chemicals may pose risks to wildlife and humans. Although compounds in waste drinking water are not federally monitored, a dozen pharmaceuticals are currently on the EPA's contaminant candidate list, which may lead to future regulation under the Safe Drinking Water Act and a call for more advanced water treatment facilities. Either way, the evidence suggests that we may need to look more closely at the importance of the non-lethal pollutants in our own waste. Just because it leaves the body doesn't mean it leaves the planet. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow. If you have any questions or comments or ideas for us, we're on Facebook and Twitter, and of course, down in the comments below. And if you want to keep getting smarter with us here at SciShow, you can go to youtube.com slash SciShow and subscribe.